scene. Actually, I'm going to have to pull it up again, too. I'm about to skip that for tonight. I was going to bring up a scene from The Matrix. Uh, is So, questions here, and then uh, I'll cut off. So, the question is... Um, I'm on the, I'll leave it on the T matrix thing. So the question is, is the color man page just an alias to color auto? Uh, it actually isn't. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and it's based on some archaic things, uh, called, called term cap. It was a, an old technology designed to make a way for terminals to be compatible. At one point they hadn't decided what all terminals were going to be about. And, uh, if I can find it again real quick so I can show it to you github.com slash rwx config so it's under uh, it's under the my config repo and it's where is it it's called there's ls colors which is good I should probably show you that one so this is the directory colors which is kind of complicated there's an actually if you do directory colors there's another file that you have to have but back to to uh less so the, here it is so if you can see this this is how you do it you um this this is just a, another thing right you, you don't have to have less dash r uh i do but but this is a real key right here so anything that uses less, that includes man, any of your own, like when you do a git diff, uh, or actually git diff does its own color stuff. That's a completely different thing. I'm confusing. But yeah, so anything that uses less will, will have these colors. The key to remember is that these key codes here, uh, and I can you can look up the key codes, uh, you have to make sure to get the resets correct. Okay, and I'm using, I'm using uh, environment variables that I have set for the different colors. And I have a, a rather large, I mean, you can just look up what that color is. Um, if you want, I can I can show it to you. I can translate it for you, but um, that stuff is all in its own file. And I've spent a lot of time over the years uh, getting the colors down. Um, they're based on terminal escape sequences, which I will not go into <laughs> here. But, um, so, uh, here, here's the gnome terminal. That's not it. Oh, by the way, this is a cool thing. If you want to change the terminal, the gnome terminal title, you can actually send an ANSI escape sequence with the text and it will change your terminal, which will, uh, then appear in OBS properly with the new title. So if you would, you know, if you're, you can even script it. So if you want to open a terminal with a, the same name every time so that when you open your OBS, it finds the terminals, that's a cool little thing you can do. Um, let me find my colors. I broke them out like this because it was hard enough. Here we go. Term color. Uh, let me zoom in again. So uh, first we have a bunch of escape sequences that, that I'll only say... These are invisible control sequences that uh, escape sequences that are that the ter any terminal that supports it uh, interpret to do different things, and that includes Windows. So the new Windows terminal that they released last year does this. So escape, uh, and this is by the way, this is the easiest way to write it. Some people use a slash e. I think that's the same. 033, I think, is is more compatible with other shells. Uh, I don't know that for sure, but that's just how I was raised. So 033 is the same as backslash E. Uh, and then you have this unique thing. This says, get ready, here comes some data. And then the M is what closes it out. Uh, the reset is just a zero. But as you'll see down below, these codes right here all mean different things. So bold is a one. Underline is a four, blink on is five, blink off is twenty-five, and so as as your terminal draws out all these characters, it sees these sequences and it changes the state of the terminal for the rest of the things it prints until it gets set to something else. Inverse, you can turn stuff on and off. Uh, I like this normal one. This will actually set back to the default text or the default uh, background. 
that's sometimes nice when you don't want to do a full reset. So maybe you want to leave the background, but you want to change the foreground back to normal. Um, and there's this really great one here called Clear. And then I have, a, I have an alias uh, to Clear, which, uh, that's interesting. They don't know how to syntax I like that. They're totally dumb. Uh, this is much faster than bin Clear which is a, a full command that you'd have to run to do the same thing. Um, so yeah, I put put that there. Uh, ANSI colors, this is just a cool little bit of code I found someplace. This just loops through all of the colors I can show to you at some point. Gives you all the different combinations. Uh, but I'd like to show you those now. So this, I was a real fan of Solar Rush for a long time. I still am. Uh, but, so I've left this here. But more importantly is this right here. So this tells you, this is the number that goes right after the bracket right here and to get this particular color that you want. And so I put them into variables because I'm going to combine them later down in, this, down in the code. So I have underscore R30, 31, 32. This is the, all of the, the standard eight colors from you know the original terminals and the standard background colors. So those are the standard foreground colors, the standard background colors, and if you, they also all have bright equivalents. Okay, so this is one area that is rather new. So you'll notice these are 90s. Uh, these are all in the 90 range. And Solarize supports that, but in the old days, Solarize was done by indicating a 1, and then a semicolon, and then one of these other colors. Uh, but if you use the 90s colors, I don't know if you know, this is very, very like cryptic knowledge. But if you use the 90s, you don't get you don't get bolded. So I'm not going to go into what Solarized is, but let's just say that Solarized used many of the colors and threw them away and combined them with bright versions in order to get a whole bunch more uh, grayscales. And that's great. You know, it gave it some. But. If you do it in the old fashioned way with a one colon, then you not only do you get like orange or magenta, which are colors that don't exist, uh, not, not magenta, uh, orange or uh, what's another one, violet. Uh, those colors don't exist because they're combinations of, of other colors. Uh, not only do you, you get that, you also get a bold version of it. In other words, a bright version. So if you use the 90 numbers, which, uh, started on AIX and then got bigger apparently. These are now supported everywhere apparently. You don't get the extra bold artifacts. You don't get it does in other words it's not bold and orange. It's just orange. Okay. Or or I'm sorry, it's just uh yeah. It's just orange. So and then here are the bright can the background equivalents. And so when you combine these colors uh you you get this again this was designed for solarized but uh you can gain a lot of knowledge about how colors work just by deciphering how this code works so i'm exporting a bunch of these uh, uh environment variables and i'm building them as i go so this says put the escape there then it adds the the whatever the number is for yellow and then it closes out the escape sequence and then I and then I also exported um, an alias called yellow, orange, red, magenta. So then I can use these these directly, and that's really and, and that was really the source of the question is like how did you get the last the less stuff to work right? So now that you know about these colors, and if you really want to understand this, you can you can read it. Here's how you randomize color. By the way, this is one of the coolest things ever about Shell. You just take the modulo of the number for which you want a, a random range. So if you want eight co random colors, you do random random percent eight. You want thirty two random colors, random percent thirty two. It's really really awesome. Um, and uh, a bunch of this stuff I'll let you figure out. But let me go back to why that matters for our for our less terminal. So less and more are these colors. So that just explains why I have this. So this is actually an NC escape sequence. In fact, if you're on the terminal, you were to print that, you would get the colors. You wouldn't actually get a number or anything. And um, and you got to make sure you have your resets. If you don't have your resets, you'll get bleeding. And I'll show you what bleeding looks like now. Um, oops, 
I don't think I have a terminal up here. Killed all my terminals. All right. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, so if you do like an ENV, this is kind of fun. So all those colors are don't they're not showing anywhere, right? Or are they? <laughs> so they're like they're coloring it when they come out. This is all my command functions. Some people don't like having their environment polluted like that. I don't mind because it means I can run all of that immediately and I can send it through an SSH session without having to SCP it to another system using set env in my SSH config. All right, so um, but here's, here's, so, yeah, so let's see. So, uh, da, da, da. ENV grep, uh, yes. So you see here's the, they don't, there's nothing there, right? Because they're, that's, that's where the things are. But if you type souls, you get all the colors. If you type ANSI colors, you get all the colors. And you'll notice the solarized colors don't look solarized, right? Because this is, this is how they look now. If I change the terminal to Solarize, since we're on this topic, I might as well just do it and show you. This is what a Solarize terminal looks like. So it's got, you know, it's it's got more muted grays. See how the they've taken over all the gray colors instead of having those be a variation. I'll change it back real quick just for fun, so you can see. So we go back to blank, and you see yeah, they've got the green and the yellow, and the bright yellow and the bright green. And over here we have we have them this way. <laughs> 